Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 918. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, click on the link below the video. In this video here, we want to talk about an upside down VLOOKUP. So VLOOKUP can look up the number 21 in this table here, and it will return 15, right? So it looks this up. But what if we want to look up 21 in this uh, table here? find the number. So 21 is just past 20, so we really want it to go to the next row. The default approximate match in VLOOKUP would return the 15, but what do you do if you want to return the 30? Let's first remind ourselves how VLOOKUP works for approximate match. So I'm going to say equals VLOOKUP. We're going to give it the lookup value, comma. The table, the first column is sorted ascending, A to Z, smallest to biggest. The second column is going to have the value we want to return, so I type a comma. And a 2 for column index 2, value we want to return. We want to get that 15 from the second column, comma. And then notice VLOOKUP has only two options for type of lookup. Approximate match. Exact match means it would find it, and it would give us an NA because there is no 21 here. But approximate match, the metaphor for understanding how it works is it looks up the 21, races down, it bumps into the first bigger value, and jumps back. And that's what determines the row. Then the 2 determines the column, and it returns the 15. Now, by default, it assumes this. So I'm going to backspace, close parentheses, control 15. enter. All right. So that's working for the standard approximate match. But what in the world do we do if we want the next one? Well, we're not going to use VLOOKUP. We're going to use some uh, two new lookup functions. We're going to use INDEX and MATCH. Now let's first look at INDEX. Notice this is the same setup as we had just a moment ago. I want to see if I can get INDEX and MATCH to work like we've got VLOOKUP to work. And then we'll switch it up to see how to do an upside down uh, VLOOKUP. So we're going to look at INDEX. Now, index requires an array, and it's the values, potential values you want to return to the cell. So I need this 30, right? So index, you just highlight just the values to return. Then you type a comma. Now you have to give it the row number. Now, if we were just to type in the row number, we can see it would be 3 here, right? Now, but that would be silly, right? We need a uh, automatic way depending on what we type here to determine that row number. But that's that's what index needs. It just needs a row number. No problem. We can use the match function. This is also a lookup function. But what it does is it can look up the 21 and find the relative position of that 21 in this list here. So watch this. Lookup value, comma. And then just like the VLOOKUP has a first column, match is going to simulate what the VLOOKUP does when it looks in the first column. I highlight this and then comma. The 1 or less than, if we put a 1 here, it'll do the same thing that approximate match in VLOOKUP does. It actually looks us up, races down, bumps into the first bigger one, and jumps back. But look at what it says here. It says less than. Technically, what it's doing is it's taking this value and it's finding the largest value that is less than or equal to the lookup value. So the largest value that is less than or equal to is the 20. So that's why it returns. This idea of um, finding the biggest one and bumping back is only a metaphor. Even this is somewhat of a metaphor here. Technically, it does a binary search, which is incredibly fast. But this setup, index match with the 1, does the same thing that the lookup does. 15. Right? So we wouldn't want that. But now, remember, our goal is to get to the next one. So the trick is we're going to, in our third argument, do minus 1. Now, it says greater than, but check this out. As a metaphor, what does it do? It's going to take this. Oh, sorry. I'm going to click Escape, Escape, Escape. The most important thing is that if you're going to use minus 1, you have to sort this first column, Z to A, biggest to smallest, or descending. Right click, sort, and sort largest to smallest. Now, this won't work unless we change this to minus 1. Now again, the way to think of this is now it's going to take this 21, race down, bump into the first one smaller than it, 
and jump back. That's the metaphor for understanding how this is working. Technically, it's going to find the smallest value. Looking up the 21, the smallest value that is greater than or equal to the lookup value. And it's that one right there, determining the second row. Close parentheses on the match. I need to close parentheses on the index and control enter. Ah, oh, that is just amazing. Now, in, in essence, we're doing an upside down VLOOKUP. We're kind of the opposite of approximate match for VLOOKUP by using index and match and minus one. Now, let's look at one other example. Here's our uh, land square footage, and we need a drainage pipe size, right? And so we're going to do this upside down VLOOKUP using index. The values I want to return are the pipe size, comma, the row number. I'm going to use match, which gives me the relative position or our row number. Look up this number, comma. Just like VLOOKUP, there's that first column, right? But we need to put it inside of match. And then because we're finding, looking for the first value smaller and jumping back, as a metaphor, I put minus 1. Close parentheses on match, close parentheses on index, and it found the 18. If I change this exactly to 250, right, it finds this 15, 250, and anything less until it gets to 100. So 101 would still return that 15, but when we get to our 100, boom, it's going to re return that 10. All right, upside down VLOOKUP using index match and minus 1. See you next video.